Hi, this is Don Coscarelli, and welcome to the home movie segment of the uh, LaserDisc. I'm sitting here with uh, Reggie Bannister, who's been kind enough to join us. Yeah, I'm here. I'm here, Don. I, uh, I don't like to miss home movies, you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, hopefully we won't bore the audience out there with them. No, this is great stuff. And I, I, you know, I remember uh, this, uh, all this stuff in, in the White Room was, uh, you know, it was kind of House of Pain stuff for me, you know what I mean? Well, there's no question about yeah. that because, uh, you know, a Phantasm movie isn't a Phantasm movie if we don't have Reggie hit the deck numerous he's, times. He's got to hit the deck numerous times, absolutely. Yeah. And glad to do it, Don, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> there's a little bes behind the scenes work that can show uh, how we did some of the effects with this uh, flying through the, you can see the mirror set up to, uh, for the space gate. Smoking. <laughs> Oh, man, I remember this. One, two, three. <laughs> now, we were trying to achieve the effect of the uh, space gate collapsing upon itself in some kind of interdimensional time warp. And, and when sucking me <laughs> into <laughs> it. That yeah, was yeah. the plan. Now, we were doing this the low-tech way where we had you uh, wired up to... Uh, uh, a couple of ropes there on your yeah. feet. And every grip in the world. Uh, throw a canister at Reg. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I got hit a couple of times, uh, actually. You got nailed right on the head one yeah. time. I know, yeah. for a fact. But we used a wind machine and pulling on Reggie's uh, legs and a lot of good acting on your part. Well, thank you, To sir. make it seem like you were really being sucked back in there. This, this stuff looks a little hokey here, but on the film, it looks great. Uh, we actually had a video tape recorder. This was quite uh, ahead of our time back then, a very uh, primitive one. We'd watch the takes afterward and save film. Ah, uh, yes. Tommy's funeral. Yes. Alas, poor Tommy. I remember him well. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he was actually my lead guitar player, if you recall, at the time. I know. Actually, in the, uh, I mentioned that in the earlier commentary yeah. about his desire to die in a film. Oh, he loved it. Yeah. Well, there's Angus, Ooh. waiting for his call. <laughs> Mike really led the life of Riley on this film as a young kid having access to this dirt bike, uh, hot car. Oh, can you imagine? I mean, you know, shooting the 45, you know, just like, he had a, I mean, what kid wouldn't want to be in his place? I should say. Here you can see some of the choreography that went on uh, you know, we actually, it may look like we were just winging it, but we really practiced these things out and tried to, you know, work them out to maximum advantage. These films were shot by a young man named Michael Gross, and he was our sound man, actually. I remember Michael. And we uh, provided him with the uh, Super 8 film, and uh, so every day he'd get his little camera out, and when he wasn't doing sound, he'd shoot the, the footage. He did a terrific job. Yeah, he did. He really did. Here you can see one of his scenes where he actually does a, a POV, puts the camera in there and lets the boys... Uh, oh, like the bugs <laughs> POV, right? Yeah. <laughs> we should have done that in the film. This is how we used to motivate that uh, CUDA crew power. Yeah, there you go. Was that, that's about 10 grip power, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It worked well until about the sixth or seventh take. <laughs> Ye old ice cream truck. I used to drive that, remember? I, I, remember. Mean, I, I, I mean, besides in the picture, I, yeah. I drove it home a couple of oh, times. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe I shouldn't have told uh, you that. <laughs> well, now here are our high-tech special effects in action. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Nothing but a little rubber and a fishing line can't yeah. handle. Well, talk about in your face. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it looks great, you know? Yeah, well, quick cutting, you know, good acting. That's all it takes. There's Adele Lustig, our wonderful production coordinator. And here we are at Sunnyside Mortuary. Ah, uh, yes. Fresh caskets, ready to go. <laughs> Fresh caskets, sounds like a song. <laughs> I'm inspired, give me my guitar. <laughs> God, did he love getting in those caskets oh. or what? Jeez. What a deal. <laughs> yeah, we uh, shot at Sunnyside down there, and Reg, now you actually uh, ended up getting a job after the film was over. The most amazing thing done. I, you know, I needed a day job at the time because I was playing a lot of music. 
And uh, I uh, answered an ad that was in the paper. It turned out to be uh, driving a truck <laughs> for a floral delivery. <laughs> it turned out to be Sunnyside's Flower Shop. Wow. Well, I got, ended up uh, doing some of, interesting you, things I was going to say, you yeah. learned a lot about uh -huh. that business, didn't you? Yes, I did. Uh, like, how do you uh, push a coffin into a crypt? <laughs> hey, well, I can do it. I'll tell you that. Uh, I have to show you sometime, Don. They had some beautiful caskets there. I was uh, just surprised to learn that you know you could actually buy them. They were hermetically sealed. You know, there's a little yeah. you know, yeah, shut them and right. just no that's air, right. no nothing gets in. Ah, Dunsmere. Yeah. What well, this ha this house has place. a long legacy of use in motion pictures. It uh, appeared in uh, the film Burnt Offerings. It mm -hmm. was always in, also in uh, A View to a Kill, the Bond picture. Right. Uh, the Lady in Lavender. Yeah. yeah. She was Kathy uh, Lester. We used the uh, Panaflex camera on this film, and even though we had very limited resources in terms of money, this was one thing that we, from the outset, decided to d devote some uh, of funds to, and uh, I think it paid off in the long run because I think that the image uh, qualities really held up well, the lenses were really good, and the camera movement was solid. You bet. Even on a no-budget film, there's there's certain things that you cannot, uh, you know, you, you just have to go for it. Yeah, you know? absolutely. You can't subtract from your production that way. Boy, we were up at that uh, location for, was it two days or three days yeah, it straight, was a pretty much? two-day period, yes. These are some shots from the uh, little warehouse where we shot the bulk of the picture. One half of it was devoted entirely to the mausoleum on the left over there, and the other half we used for various purposes, like overturned ice cream trucks and uh, shooting sequences with uh, the Volkswagen. We used a lot of cobwebs in this film. A lot of webs, yeah. That's Mark Schwartz, our uh, first assistant cameraman, laying out the uh, cobwebs. He also uh, helped build that mausoleum. There were no real lines of distinction or along crew lines like in a regular film. On this. No, I mean, there really Everybody wasn't. did everything. You know, the actors lugged equipment, yep. as did the director and the yep. producer. This sequence is... Uh, involved the puppetry of the fingers and if you take a good look in the next couple shots you can see underneath the landing there is where the uh, uh, puppeteers uh, worked and they used this mirror here sitting on this person's lap it's kind of an optical illusion to l see what was going on up on top you can see them watching puppeting uh, in the mirror there I think all the effects came out really nice I oh, mean yeah. you know Everything was so organically done, you know, like we're talking about thread and wire and, right. you know, mixing up yellow stuff and <laughs> trying to get the right consistency, <laughs> using milk at first, right, in that oh, yeah. mix? And then it was, it, that milk would spoil it and it just smelled oh, terrible. The place would stink. Oh, God. Ah, Dos Equis. Yes. We sucked down a few of those pipes, huh? <laughs> Quite a few. <laughs> we bought that little makeup trailer there where you guys always had your makeup done. And yeah. uh, we towed it around uh, to whatever the location was. And it was sort of the only little spot of warmth or place to hang out in between uh, shooting. That's was that the rent a casket there? Yeah, uh, that's it. That was our casket. <laughs> and uh, we're back in the mausoleum set. You can actually see off the mausoleum wall there. Uh, yeah, this, that mausoleum we really put to good use. I mean, we were able to shoot a big chunk of the picture there. Oh, you know, that was a beautiful set. Yeah, I mean, it, really it looked was. so yeah. real, I mean. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Nicely done. Here's a couple of the crew members, uh, Steve and uh, George, are standing in for Mike and uh, Bill in one of the sequences. You can see how strongly that mausoleum set was built because we could actually mount the camera up on the walls. You can't do that in a regular Hollywood set, let no. me tell you. That's right. Bill never could quite get the recoil right, you know, on these blank guns because if you watch it now in slow motion, he shoots, but then yeah. he recoils like a uh, second later sometimes. Yeah. And it's, uh, well, you know, that's kind of tough, you know, with the blanks because there is there is no recoil, of course.
That one looked pretty good. And there's uh, Myrtle. There's Myrtle. She was the boy's housekeeper and uh, just had that one little sequence with you. Actually. Yeah, it was a great little scene, yeah, too. Yeah, it played well. Kind of a shock scare. Yeah, <laughs> out of nowhere, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, here's the door being blasted off. Yeah, and you can see the way that we did this is uh, uh, Paul Pepperman, we had him suited up with a motorcycle helmet there so he wouldn't get injured, and he'd grab onto those handles on the back of the door, which was not attached. The hinges were taken off. And on action, he'd just dive forward and fly towards the camera and then land on his back and pull the door on top of him so he would stay hidden. Look, it looks great. <laughs> <laughs> Probably cost you ten thousand dollars in a real special effects. Oh right? yeah. Now this is a scene you can really see where uh, Angus was grooved into his role. I mean, he really took that role out of Tommy on seriously, didn't he? Boy, he, you know, always. Always. Here's a funny shot. The crew sleeping in the back of the hearse on the way up to location. <laughs> <laughs> Boy. Oh God. There's that big wind machine. Uh, I think that had a 100-horsepower Volkswagen engine, and, man, that thing could really put out some uh, wind. Oh, yeah. Look at that. But this is a kind of a painful scene here, too, I because uh, actually I think Michael was uh, in, in front of the wind machine uh, throwing pebbles. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I know I got hit more than a, a few times. That must have been freezing in front of that thing. Oh. I mean, it was a cold night, and then you got that wind chill of a 100 mile an hour wind. Oh, it was so cold. And then, of course, Kathy is like in this, you know, dress. real light yeah. lavender dress, yeah. you know, very sexy looking, but. <laughs> I still want to know what you're thinking about there, Reg. I'm uh, probably not thinking much, Don. That was about the 21st hour of shooting, I think. Oh, my God. <laughs> These are some of the red planet sequences. We painted one of the walls of the mausoleum red, and we used to uh, blow some smoke up alongside of it, and uh, that's how we got those sequences. And this is the world's first steady cam. Well, certainly one of them. That was like the year they were invented, and uh -huh. it didn't didn't work well, and we had to cut the sequence out. Oh, man. Now, this was an ingenious plan that Michael had to get out of this room. It certainly was, wasn't <laughs> it? And, of course, for the, uh, the actual shot, we had... Uh, we got George, right? Well, he had to do some of the uh, uh, subsequent shots. Mike did the first one, which was the one that was used in the film. But, you know, I always insist on many takes, as many as we can do within reason, just to make sure we get these effects right, especially. And so this we, I know, Don. Yeah. This well, I know. <laughs> born the brunt of that, <laughs> that philosophy, unfortunately. Actually, you know, it's terrific because you, as an actor, you, you always know you're going to get the finest, you know, quality scene that you can possibly have. You know, and it's true because uh, in, in subsequent films that I've made with uh, other casts, I've uh, never understood why an actor would not want to do numerous takes. I know sometimes there's the physical discomfort, but in my mind, you know, it's a, it's a legacy, the film, and you'd want it to be your absolute positively best effort. And when somebody, you know, would refuse to do a take saying they'd done it best, I, I just don't understand why they wouldn't try again. Well, I think with some actors, they, they feel that they lose a freshness uh, or a, a spontaneity with the lines. Uh, well, that's... But, uh, you know, uh, I, I don't really feel that way. I, I think that uh, more is better in that circumstance. Now, you're about to have a shotgun blasted right by you. Yeah, here, yeah I've got some uh, aluminum foil taped on my face to protect me. Yes, yeah, yeah. so this is a, a high quality uh, equipment uh, shot here. Huh? Yeah, you can see me sitting Get that tin foil. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> no, put it on Don's head. <laughs> yeah, oh well, man. This is uh, Angus's first day of work, if oh, you believe it. His first uh, time portraying the tall man. This is this first scene, first shot. And, and uh, yeah, it was a little uh, strange because nobody had ever seen him with his game face on, with yeah. that tall man look. Uh -huh. And the first one to see it was Mike. 
and he'd open the window and uh, see it, and he would burst out laughing because <laughs> Terrific. It, it was so terrifyingly <laughs> bizarre. <laughs> and it was, uh, I know it was a struggle for Angus that day because he was trying to stay in the character because he wanted to make that work. And uh, he, uh, you know, was faced with this boy who was laughing at him in every take. But we persevered. We did numerous takes, and we got a really savage one. And then, of course, Angus would launch his, launch his body through the plate glass window. I think he's going to do it. Oh, yeah. wow. <laughs> oh, man. And then take two. Suffice to say, there were numerous takes after that. Uh, this is uh, how we did the sphere sequence. We just have a pitcher who would actually throw the ball. And coming up are the uh, very first camera tests. Here they are oh, in reverse fantastic. of the ball flying. And when we uh, started out to make this sphere sequence, none of us had any kind of uh, experience working with a mirrored surface. And for the first day or so, we were literally trying to light the sphere. And suddenly someone came to the conclusion, the realization that a sphere, chrome sphere, is a mirror. And you don't light it, you light the surroundings. So what we had to do then is we uh, put the light on the walls, and we actually put a fake wall in there, you'll see. Uh, and we drilled uh, Ken Jones here with the, the sphere rig that was designed by uh, Will Green. Here's the one rig that was not used, which had a, a padded head that the sphere yeah. would impact in, but it was just it was impossible thick and yeah, to hide and under him. the makeup, so yeah. we, we jettisoned that idea. That's a... It's a one, nice car is yeah. what it is, Don. <laughs> 340 four-speed. That's a beauty. Cuda. And, you know, I remember driving that back from the Dunsmere house, and uh, it was raining, and the sunroof leaked. Oh, my <laughs> God. We were just soaked. <laughs> God. Well, this is one of the uh, uh, big quandaries we reached in making this film. One of the obstacles is uh, this scene called for Angus to surprise Mike at the door, grab him by the throat, hoist him in the air, and carry him 20, 25 feet over and hurl him into the hearse. Well, that... Uh, kid weighed at least 115 pounds, 120 pounds, and there's just no way Angus yeah. could hold him at yeah. arm's length. Uh -huh. So, enter the camera dolly, and we handheld the camera and used the camera dolly to carry Mike out. And it worked just great. It looked great. Yeah. It really did. Took a little and bit it, of choreography. Uh huh. And it, it turned out great. Oh, I mean, it yeah. looked really good. It looked just like he was just being lifted right up. Yeah, you know, placed him right up. With a lot of strength. Throw that kid in there. <laughs> <laughs> now, this is a fun day. This is, uh, uh, Bill had just uh, written, or, you know, what he had uh, of uh, sitting here till midnight. I think he had done it the night before. And we had to do that sequence with the guitars. And uh, we sat down about an hour before we filmed it, as I recall put this thing together and we added this little rock and roll sequence uh, at the end to kind of give it a, an ending, but that was a lot of fun. Yeah, I love that song. And it's in the supplementary materials, I believe, also. Um, well, this was the big finale of the film, and obviously uh, one of the real successful moments of Phantasm, which is the fact that uh, Mike cannot escape the tall man or his uh, creatures. Oh, it's terrible. That's what's so frightening about the film, Don. Is he's everywhere. You know, I mean, you can't you can't go anywhere that where he's not. He's kind of omnipresent in that way. It's uh, he, he's really an awesome character. Well, even though it had overtones of sci-fi, basically the tall man is the embodiment of death, and uh, you cannot escape it. Yeah. Here's our dwarf creature getting ready for his big scene. John Zampano, one of the grips, uh, played the dwarf, and we had his hands made up. Yeah, these these uh, scenes uh, where you show people smoking <laughs> and makeup, <laughs> that's great. When I had the knife in me, it was uh, really funny because there's, a, I think, a still of me having coffee with the knife coming out oh, of my... Right, so that's great. A lot of blood around. It looks funny. Well, Mike was a real trooper. He put up with... We had five of these mirrored uh, uh, glasses, and he broke through uh, all of them pretty savagely. Right. The effect was great. 
Well, Reg, it's been great looking at these home movies with you. Sure has. We'll have to do this again sometime. You bet, time. <laughs>